Hey guys. guys. Hey everybody. There's two of us today. Yo. Yo. Oh man. Hey, how about them Seattle Mariners, guys? Give it up. You know? Give it up for the Seattle freaking Mariners. Do we do we want to? Oh no. No, Joe, we don't. Okay. Uh, hey, let's just say hi to everyone really quick, Joe. Dude, user, Ari, Skull, Ethaniel, Kyle Jones, dude. K. Kinney, what's up? K. Kinney, how'd you know that it was going to be both of us? How'd you do that? That was genius. That was, that was wild. How'd you do that? Joe and Colton? That's right, guys. I think the Mariners should give it up. I think you should give it up. <laughs> Joe and Colton, the only thing that can turn this day around? Happy, happy to help, guys. Happy we could help, you know? I wasn't planning on going live, and then, and then, um, Towards the end of the game, I started to get into a little bit better of a mood. And so, Michael, what's up, dude? Started to get into a little bit better of a mood. Um, and thought to myself, you know what? I'll go live. Texted Joe, said, hey, man, I'm going to go live after the game for like a little bit. And then he said, you know what? I'll join you. And here, here we are. Here we are. No homework tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here <laughs> on a day that's not Sunday. Uh, I took the chat box off the screen stream overlay just because like it wasn't gonna fit how we wanted it to but yeah dude the uh the mariners offense really knows how to how to you know pull us pull us back in as soon as we're ready to let go we are we're ready to just you know commit to the bit we're not gonna win this game and then your guy your guy dom can zone leading the team in homers another one tonight Obviously, Mitch, a pitch that shouldn't have been hit for a home run, in my opinion. Oh, no, not at all. Just insane that he hit that out, but not enough to overcome the five runs given up by my ace, my Cy Young pick, George. I I I don't understand what's going on with him, him and Luis both. But George, I'm not gonna like George. Looks even worse than Luis. And is in these last two starts, obviously Luis has looked bad for all three of his starts. Um, I don't know. I mean, what was it like? Twenty six foul balls today. Yeah, I think so. Like that. Like teams again, again. Teams know that that George is going to be in the strike zone. So it's like what? And yeah, and and like Ian said, Polanco's defense is atrocious. Like it has been bad. We knew not even it wasn't like, going to be great. But, but it's bad. We, 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 I don't think in a million years we would have thought it would have been like watching me or you out there trying to feel the ball. It's like, like, it's just, it's, I don't know what they should do about it though. You know what I mean? What? What are you smiling just picture, at? Picturing you at second base. Yeah, whatever. Um, From, you know, high school. Uh-huh. Like, so, like, what do we, they do like, though? Like, like, do they just keep Polanco just running it out there? Like, do they move they him have to, to? Do they move him to third and just like try and get rojas like at second with a more sure guy up the middle and just like eat the defense at third like i don't understand i would rather i think i'd rather have the defense at third than i would at second yeah but like rojas isn't doing great at third but he was great at second last year i mean he's he looked up pretty decent defensively yesterday okay but i don't know i think that i think that overall so let's talk a little bit about polanco here because when 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 the Mariners acquired Teoscar Hernandez, they were like, oh, you know, the defense is going to be terrible, blah, blah, blah. And he had his moments where it wasn't great. But overall, Teoscar Hernandez didn't have really a whole lot of moments last year where I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just like, this is affecting the team every day. Polanco does. And I have never thought of Polanco as a bad defensive second base. I, never th- I knew he wasn't great. I never thought of him as downright bad. But it's been bad. <laughs> And I just don't understand why. Like, what? I mean, and, and the fact that he's not providing anything on, on offense right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's had, you know, some some moments here and there. But, like, and, and I there's one at his last at-bat today. I will give him credit. It should have been a walk. The, the umpires just suck. Yeah. So. I mean, yesterday, it, it, Buckner it, was, whoo. Yo, dude, Buckner's so bad. Um, Back to George, dude. Like, Back, I mean, just the whole starting pitching staff, the, the staff as a whole, right? Like, we're sitting here, 
Whose defense is worse, Wong or Polanco? Polanco by far. Oh, not even, not even close. In, in the sample size, Polanco's been worse. I yeah. Ian's saying Polanco's been an awful defender. I feel like he's been below average. This is like he is the worst defender at second base. It seems like right now. Like I don't think it was ever that bad previously. But you know, that's it. Uh, go back to you can go back to Kirby. I think just this pitching staff as a whole. It is atrocious right now. And, you know, we've been, we were complaining, oh, we can't let Emerson Hancock make another start. What about the rest of this pitching staff? They've been just as bad. They've been terrible. Like, they don't, they, why, I mean, I get that they have a, you know, bigger sample size of being good and whatnot. We know the potential's there with them. But, I mean, we're just going to dog on, on Emerson Hancock after, like, his fourth or fifth major league start. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, these guys were paying them millions more. To go would be good, and they're not. They're not. They're just not. They're not better than Emerson Hancock right now. No, this entire staff, maybe Bryce Miller. That's it. That's it. I, I, I've seen some tipping pitches comments. I I mean, I don't think there's anything that's like noteworthy. My only yeah. thing would have been like against the Guardians, like Vote was like the bullpen coach last year for the Mariners. So like maybe he had some sort of competitive inside edge there with like what he knows about the pitching staff. But aside from that, like, I don't think I've noticed anything more so about like Castillo or Kirby in terms of the way that they're coming right. set or whatever. It's been Castillo's command specifically out of the stretch has just been downright disgusting. Just awful. Go ahead. I want to talk about Jim's post right there uh, or comment right there. Jim, he moves on every single pitch. It's not, it's not like off the, speed. It's every single the, pitch. The squeeze thing that he does. Yeah. Where he yeah. like flaps his glove. If you it's every single pitch. Yeah. He, I know he sets up his pitch to start in the splitter, right? Like that's how he holds the ball naturally. And then he moves it like, while he's flapping his glove yeah. to like whatever pitch he's going to throw. Cause like he said, I, or someone, it was one of the broadcasters might've been Goldsmith that was saying like when George was like trialing the splitter they knew it was coming because he wasn't starting that way and he'd have to adjust it in his glove and it was like obvious like by the glove movement. But now it's like, I think he's starting with the splitter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lucario says, watch crack and hockey. They're, they've, they already got knocked out of the playoffs. At least the Mariners still have a chance. Yeah, we've got, yeah. we've got 150 games left to make the playoffs, boys. Yeah. Um, again, okay. So I want to start reading chat here in just a sec um, and not talk too much about this game uh but there are a couple things that i want to note that i've read so far in the chat um one of them was at the very beginning i know that you guys talked about i know that you guys talked in the last or one of the last streams you were in about um justin go ahead and take a look at uh teo strikeout rate really quick and actually there was a really good thread that i saw justin about how those players are performing now compared to their first 12 games with the Mariners. They were better with the Mariners. Just so you know, buddy. Um, you guys talked about having a team meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have the team meeting. Every game counts. I don't care. I, I, I truly, I truly don't care how early it is. Go have a team meeting because this is unacceptable. This is absolutely unacceptable. The way this team is playing baseball right now. And there's no, there's no excuse for it. And you can't, I, I tweeted it earlier, you can't blame it on Scott, you can't blame it on Justin and Jerry, and you can't blame it on John Stanton. This baseball team is better than they're playing right now, and they just aren't showing it. They're, those are the guys out there swinging the baseball bat, throwing those pitches, making those errors. The players are the problem. That's, there's no two ways around it. They're flat right now. And any, anybody that's saying that, that the Mariners don't care, that the players don't care, you're wrong. They care more than all of us. I promise you. I promise you they care more than every single one of us. But I don't know. I just don't get anyone that's saying the players don't care. But it, it, it's not acceptable the way they're playing right now. I think the team, like, if anything, the team meeting should happen on Thursday. Yeah, I agree. Like, it'll just, it, it should happen Thursday. Whether we know about it or not, there should be something happening. I see Sotomo just saying that, like, it's like Scott's post game interview. Like the players need to be more emotionally invested. If that's if that's true, that's kind of like a, a yikes from Scott. But like also like it's true. You just like that's another like saying the quiet thing out loud. Like it's saying the quiet part out loud of like if the guys aren't showing it on the field of like being as invested as they should be. Like that's on 
one accountability from the rest of the team and then if it's not showing that way then the coaching staff should i think you know have some sort of conversation at some point um i'm seeing like i don't know there's there's a lot of stuff people are upset you know teams four and eight team was four and eight last year not to give any excuses out there but like we're on the same trajectory so far win loss wise as it was last year and Yes, they missed out on the playoffs, but like they still won 88 games. If it doesn't turn around, you know, by the next like 10 or so, then you're like, okay, you're really like, you're really starting to push the luck there. And like, I don't know, seeing stuff about like Brant Brown, like, where's he at? I know, I mean, there's been a couple comments even on Twitter, or just outside of just this stream. I see Jim shouting into the void with the caps <laughs> about, you know, Brant Brown. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. You'd like it to. You'd like it to be able to just start right away of like, you know, whatever offensive strategies he's imploring, but certain things aren't working or certain swing decisions aren't happening or like certain play discipline, like just, you know, across the board, like Garver, a guy that, you know, hasn't traditionally chased, has fallen into a little bit of swing and miss and chase in certain spots this year where it just wasn't happening last year. Cal not having his big dominance over Toronto. Yeah, he had a home run yesterday, but 0 for 4 today, not a great 0 for. Like, there's just, there's a lot of inco, like, there's not a lot of cohesiveness happening. And if it's talking about players need to be more invested, working together as a team and as a unit, like, getting together all bought into the same idea of, like, you know, how you want to play the game, that's something that has to kind of, like, probably start from top down of, like, your leaders in the clubhouse. So, I just, I, there's no right answer to like there's not one true thing that's going to change and like immediately impact this team it's going to be like a culmination of a bunch of things starting to go through the right processes and like start producing winning baseball they've scored not enough but also the pitching hasn't put them in spots to win like do we really want to be winning on two runs or three runs every night no but there are games last year where they were winning those games like the pitching staff mm -hmm. kept them in it they weren't giving up five runs from the starting pitcher. Like it was a consistent close game across the board, but they're starting off behind like every single game and they just can't catch back up. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it, it's hard to watch right now. It truly is. And like you, like you to go off what you just said, somebody said earlier, Oh, well our, our pitching's pressing because <laughs> the release Julio true. Big our our true, pitching Billy. is pressing because the Mariners offense is bad. Mariners offense doesn't even get a chance to be good by the time they're down three, four runs. It's like uh, you watch Castillo, Hancock, etc. go out there and they're giving up two, three runs in the first inning or what have you. It's like, okay, cool. Like what a what a terrible way to start a baseball game if you're the offense, knowing that, okay, we have we have to go now and try to make up for what this off or what this pitching staff is lacking right now. It's true. And I think that it's a lot, and we've talked about this in the podcast a lot. It's a lot of the top guys in, in the in the order right now. It's the Julio, it's JP, it's Polanco, it's Garver, and it's Cal. Those five, like, I mean, I'm, I haven't been lumping Cal really into this since we've been talking about this, but that five has been terrible mm -hmm. this year. Julio has been the best of all of them. But it's like, Mitch Garver is swinging at pitches I've never seen him swing at before. And keep in <laughs> mind, obviously, not on the baseball team, but it's like, He's known for having a great eye and not chasing, and he's chasing. It makes no sense to me. Jorge Polanco is running a 40% strikeout rate. Never happened before in his career. Why is it happening happening now? Mm -hmm. I, it just, I don't know. It, it, nothing about it makes sense to me. I saw someone say compare the Rangers offense to the Mariners. I mean, the Rangers are putting up a 130 WRC+. Plus. The Mariners are at 79. Like, yeah, no duh, the Rangers offense is better than the Mariners right now. They're just playing better baseball. Like, it's just kind of the way that, I mean, they started off hot last year. I don't necessarily say, like, I don't think we need to be the Texas Rangers. Sure, it'd be nice to be, no. you know, hitting the ball as hard as they're doing. But that's just not the, the roster makeup. That's not, like, what the team is built on to win with. It's just not how it works for this team. And, yes, like, it could be, oh, the owner needs to spend more money or give the front office more money or the coaching staff needs to figure out how to get guys to hit the ball hard. Like, you know, there's there's so many things that 
can and could change, but just won't because like we know how like the organization is run. JH, yes, it is a long season. We've got 150 games left. Like this is not the end of the world by any means. No. Like, I'm not I'm not ready to call it quits. It is just after a while, it, you know, we are running like it's like the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results like every single time we turn on the mariners game we're expecting our starting pitcher to go out there and shut down an offense they don't and then the offense is playing from behind having to play catch up they play a little bit but not enough like the one time where they really like fought back was against the brewers against freddie peralta and like they managed to tie that game like julio was stinging the ball all over the field yesterday decent amount today too do some of those land we have better BAPIP luck? Is the outcome different? Potentially. Like, the BAPIP's been terrible. Like, they've been unbelievably unlucky. But, like, making that out to be an excuse is just another excuse. Like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's still a loss in the record books. So, it's it's not pretty. It's not fun. Like, I do not enjoy losing and trying to be optimistic about a team that, you know, isn't giving its full potential. But I still am not like my, the faith in the team is not shaken. There's just mounting frustration because it's like, we know what they're all capable of. And it just, yeah, I don't know. I think that you're spot on. They have been super unlucky. Like you said, and there, there's no two ways around that. They have been really unlucky. You, you can say that while, while making, still not making it an excuse because mm -hmm. in the end, the win-loss column is what matters. I don't care how you got there. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some during the season that you probably shouldn't have. You're going to win some you probably shouldn't have. That's the way it is. But with that being said, this team as a whole, because of how bad they're playing, it doesn't matter how unlucky or lucky they get. It's just ugly. Uh, Michael with the 499, bro. 499. <laughs> shouts to Michael. He said the A's just beat the Rangers 4-3, to moving their record to 4-7. and seven. The four and eight Mariners are officially in last place AL West. We got passed up by the A's. You know what? Woo! At least we didn't lose to the A's yet. The Rangers did. Just remember, guys, that's how you know baseball is weird. The defending World Series champions just lost to the A's. Not the Oakland A's. Not the Sacramento A's. Not the Las Vegas A's. Just the A's. The A's. The athletics. Yeah, that, I, don't know. I mean, the A's also beat. The Tigers, who have been on a hot stretch to start the year, my my team to win the AL Central. It's just like Go I Royal. Know, I don't know, dude. When the time comes, we play the A's and we go undefeated against them. This year again, like we'll just we'll just use that as leverage that the A's beat the Rangers, but they couldn't beat us. Perfect. They're just the letter A, no, just plural. You mean just singular, Lucario? You mean just singular? The Angels are in first right now too. That's the. You know, Mike Trout is scorched earth right now. Bro's on fire. The, you know, things will level out is, is kind of the sentiment behind that chat, I'm assuming, is the Angels are in first right now. The A's aren't in last. Things will, hopefully nature will correct its course eventually. But, Michael, appreciate the five. The the alert will pop up. There it is. Right on cue. Ta-da! Yeah, appreciate that, dog. It's just kind of funny that we're behind the athletics right now. Yeah, it is kind of funny. The Mariners need to lock in. I mean, you're right, dumb Lego guy. No two ways around it. We love to play the long ball. And that's the thing is this team is not built to do that this year. They're not. And, uh, yeah. The the Astros are just as bad as the Mariners right now. That is true. I Ace saw... will correct the course. Ace will rock it up to number one. True. You know the meme of, like, the McDonald's worker where it says, like, broke ass. And then it's, like, strong, independent person. It's, like, another McDonald's worker. It was, like, the Mariners 4 and 7, the end, like, were the broke ass. And then the Astros <laughs> and the Diamondbacks were 4 and 7. It's, like, strong, yeah. independent, whatever. Like, yep. that is very much so where we're at, I think, with a lot of the, the, the bad vibes. It's just, like, you can't escape it because it's there because, like, duh, they're losing. Like, if this team was 8-4, and four, would there still be things to, like, complain about, like, and figure out? Of course. Like, they're, you know, if this team was 8-4, and four, but Julio's still batting 150, there'd be like, oh, well, there goes the MVP. Like, you know, I just, yeah. you know, I usually just want to take a step back and 
Just get, just yeah. give it, give it, a, give it a sec to breathe. Like I've seen sour vanilla smooches, bro. Like I don't think Polanco is going to continue to be the worst defender of all time. I freaking hope not. Knock on wood. Like something's gotta, something has to change. Something's gotta like switch on. And be like, oh hey, I know how to feel the baseball. I, and if I, not, I also... then he just needs to hit the hell out of the ball. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing with like Teoscar Hernandez. You either hit the ball or and miss the ball a lot, or you better be a great defender. That's what makes Kevin Kiermeyer so good, but so bad. Mm-hmm. He can catch the ball. So like, but why Brennan Ryan was a starting shortstop for a while? He could he could field it, but he couldn't hit it. I do want everyone that's saying fire Scott right now. I hear you. I do. So somebody I don't I didn't see who it was. It's Scott. I think it was Sour Vanilla. Scott's not doing anything. What do you want him to do? Like, what, 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 what? Get this is an honest faces. question. <laughs> what do you guys want? What do you guys want Scott Service to go out there and do? You know, Scott should have been fired years ago. Let's put things into perspective but really quick, Joe. I just don't know why Scott should, like, is it because it's, like, the easy way out? they need out? a scapegoat. It's, like, the easy way out? Yeah. I think that, um... Let's put things into perspective. This period of Mariners baseball, chat, this period of Mariners baseball is the second winningest period in Mariners history. Led by none other than Scott Service. Only one person, only one person has more wins for the Seattle Mariners as a manager then Scott Service and that's Lou Pinella. Like, Scott is the second best manager in Mariners history. Do I think that maybe after this year, it's time to, especially with everything that's going to happen, right? Especially with, obviously, Jerry and Justin's um, contracts possibly being up and whatnot. Is there a chance that Scott Service is gone at the end of the year too? Yes. And if that is the case, if that is the case, then so be it. Scott is with this team until the end of the year. Yeah, I don't Unless, think like firing him is not going to like change anything. It's not. It's, it's not going to do anything. I see the the Phillies, you know, comparison. Joe Girardi had like had like had run its course. Like mm. that was there was you know writing on the wall there. Like it was a couple you know poor things going like on a row. Whereas like for Scott. Like the last three years have been a okay. I feel like they've been just fine. Like yep. Girardi in twenty twenty one went eighty two and eighty with the Phillies, and then got off to a twenty two and twenty nine start, lost the clubhouse, and they fired him. And then Rob Thompson takes him to the World Series. Like yes, like I think the idea is oh well maybe Scott's lost the clubhouse, you fire him, and then the manager then you bring in takes him to the World Series. Like we're like living in fantasy land where they'll be able to replicate that same thing. The chances of that happening are slim to none. Like, I don't think that firing Scott would do anything. No. Um, Sour Vanilla says there's no energy from the guys because there's no energy from Scott. If the if the players need their manager to hype them up, then the players are the problem. I mean. The, the, you're a major league baseball player. Hype yourself up. I think there's a there's a there's an there's a level of truth to like what I think Sarvanel's getting at in terms of like if the players are not self motivating, then it's like okay, right now you need a wake up call. You need a slap to the face. You need something to really like go get it. Could it have been Dylan Moore getting ejected? Like had Scott ran out there and just started yelling and whoever ejected Dylan Moore's face, like you know. Maybe that's a moment. Maybe that is something that could then inspire confidence. And I mean, I don't think there's a reason why they would have lost the clubhouse aside from last year's comments. But then it seemed like they had rectified it. And anybody in like on the Mariners team has been very like openly vocal about, oh yeah, I know, like Scott and like whatever, like they're very like upfront, like checking in with us, keeping us connected, like coming to see us like everything like that it doesn't seem like there's this big disconnect between scott and the players at least mm-hmm. at least to me maybe right now like if it continues and like scott's just sitting there in his hoodie you know with his like face 
you know, you know Scott's face when he's just His sitting face, there. Yeah. You know what it goes to him. He's kind of like, you know, he's pontificating a little bit. He's thinking. Maybe then it's like, okay, what's going on? Like, why isn't something like happening? Like, why isn't there conversation? Like, I, you know, it's still only. I mean, I say it's only. It's twelve games. It, the, it's early crowd, but I don't know. Yeah. Um. Also, just to to everyone that's saying, uh. Iron Nelson Cruz, sorry guys, he he works for the pot. Was it the Padres? Dodgers. Dodgers. He works for the Dodgers. Sorry guys, he already has a job. Um, maybe next year. Um, and no, I think that I think that there is a conversation to be had. Um, about firing Scott, I just don't think it's yet. Like, if this continues, and if we get to July, and this team is still underperforming, that conversation is there, and I'm ready to have it because this. Is not okay. It's not so, okay. Like something would need to change at that point. Like right. I know last year when the offense was struggling, it was like fire the hitting coach, you know, before the fire Scott comments. And then, you know, it eventually devolves into the fire Scott comments. Now, like we all know, like there's like a new offensive, like, you know, the offensive strategy is Brant Bound. Are we going to fire him after 12 games? Right. I don't think so. Like, is it like the heart still, he's the hitting coach, right? Technically is like his label. Or... The heart and Arn Rich. Yeah. I, I think aren't one of them got moved. So I think it's, Oh DeHart. yeah. One of them's a bench coach now. I huh? think, I yeah. think DeHart is still the hitting coach. So like, then it's like, okay, is he, is he had, you know, has he run his course? Then right. like, you know, what do you use as a scapegoat for this team playing poorly? It's like, how do you get the players to motivate for themselves? And so it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I think, th- and, and to everybody, you know, there, there, there is two, there is the, it's still early crowd. And I'm kind of over over that at this point. You know what I mean? You gotta win I'm games. over that it's too early. Yeah. It's like it. There's no such thing as too early when we have watched this team time and time again miss out by one game on the playoffs. It's never. It's not too early anymore. I was in that camp last year when the Mariners started out four and eight, just like they have this year. This year they're four and eight. I'm not in that same camp anymore. I'm not. No. Get out there and win. I don't care how early it is. If your if your baseball team, look at the Rays last year. Right, the Rays got off to a hot start, coasted pretty much the rest of the season, made it to the playoffs. Wait, mm-hmm. did the Rays make it to the playoffs last year? Were they wild card? Yes, but they choked in the playoffs. Like they, they, they choked in the playoffs, like like the Rays do every year. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, is it early? Yes, and I think when I look at this team, when after the first month is when I really think it's time to start having hard conversations, like. After the first month, you know, like, for example, in years past, Kyle Seeger was terrible in the first month. If we just decided, hey, let's cut Kyle Seeger after the first month, you know, then we would have been the dumbest team in baseball. I think that we look at this team and you can see where the issues lie right now. The defense has not been great, but we know that it could be better. But realistically, I still come all the way back to the pitching staff. This team is built on pitching, and if the pitching staff is not, if the pitching staff is not performing, it's going to be a long night no matter what. There, there's a reason that they wanted, like the the pitchers are basically like, hey, you know, build the team around us. Here we are, we're so good, and then they don't come out and perform. You're letting the whole team down, and so is again, Julio Rodriguez, J.P. Crawford, those top five in the lineup. Your your team is built around a those top five which, I mean, of course, duh. But this pitching staff is your heart and soul. And when your pitching staff is not performing, and even when your bullpen right now, we see Gabe Spire, he's been rough lately. Yeah, he didn't allow any runs today, I don't think. Mm-hmm. But still, I think that you look at guys like Gabe Spire. It hasn't been great. Like Trent Thornton, eh, you know? Ro- Rojas, Jesus Christ. Ro- Santos? Ha- Ro Hase. You know, he's the ace, all right? You relax over there. That's true. Don't talk yeah, about that's him true. like that. That's a good point. Uh, Santos and Brash, though, when those two get back, obviously big boost to this bullpen, assuming everyone stays healthy. Brian Wu coming back will be a big boost, but as of right now, if your big three in in Castillo, Kirby, and Logan aren't performing, you're chalked. There's no there's no winning if that's the case. Yeah. What you yeah. What, what you what you said. Hello, hey, Dorian. Dorian. Hey. So let let let's 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 talk some positives here, Joe. Okay. Dominic Canzone. Uh huh. Looks good. He he. You know, started out first week. Week two though, 
back back on the Dom Can Zone train. Back on it. Like we never left, baby. That's right. Mitch Haniger looks great. Mm -hmm. Big fan, big fan. I think if we were to look at this streak of games, this 12-game streak, if this had happened in the middle of August, right, we wouldn't be thrilled, but we'd be... The only reason that we're so annoyed and amped up by it is that... It's the beginning of the year. It's the beginning of the like, year. Like, this is the only, like, set of games that we have to look at. Like, last year, I'm sure I can find a couple different occasions where the team goes 4-8 and eight across a 12-game stretch. And were we losing our minds collectively at that point? If it was in September, probably yes. But, like, you know, there's the stretches of games in May and June where you're flirting with 500 the entire time. Like, yeah, there's there's instances where it's going to be frustrating but i i get why starting out the year this slow and they've pitched the idea of like starting off the year on a better foot and it looked hopeful in spring training after the first little bit because they started off terrible with their pitching but that's not the point like polanco going from a like 12 like a 1200 ops in spring to this is just it i get the you know spring training doesn't matter like what changed? What is the difference in the approach there of like, you know, you're getting pitched too differently. Obviously the Mariners have seen what the least amount of fastballs by percentage of any team, or at least like they're close mm -hmm. to like bottom three or bottom four. And like, what, what is it going to take to change your approach and like really, really get things going? And like, is that down to Brant Brown to instill that within the team like like what is like what is it going to be yeah you got kind of dark there <laughs> yeah i did the sun went down Sun went down <laughs> so it's just there's positives sure like i mean i don't know if you said ty france but ties looked great um i know i see kevin's comment about the the pickoff or you know had a guy dead to rights and then a balk happens it's it's not just on Ty, sure, like Ty's the guy holding them on, like you gotta call something, you gotta yell. But like if no one else is yelling, like what's why is why are so many like players like checked out? Like what's the what's the disconnect? Like why are why are the guys just like not in the game? It's just weird, dude. It's just weird. Like how the whole team is playing right now. The eclipse turned off the lights on Colton. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Colton sitting in the dark corner reminiscing on the good old days. You know, chat. Should I turn off we, my lights we, too? We used to be a society, all right? The Mariners used to be a baseball team. Uh, I don't know. I think that... It's scary. I again, like this. I actually like it better like that. I don't see you. You're <laughs> so you ugly. can't see me? <laughs> yeah, because you're ugly. Uh, <sighs> yeah, the Bach was the third disengagement. Is that what happened? Because I was at work at the time, so I couldn't really tell what happened. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't fully I just I saw the the complaints on on the internet. So yeah, I I'm not fully where I just know that there's like, you know, some drama surrounding the situation of like had a guy could have been dead to rights, but then like just doesn't make the play. Go full rebuild? <sighs> Mitchell. No. There's two I think you can like I don't want to call it like side grading, but like say the Mariners are still, they continue this stretch of play four and eight, you know, they're, they're, well, math is hard. 20 and 40. If you multiply it by five, dear Lord, if they're 20 and 40 by 60 games in, you're trading, you're trading one of George Kirby or Logan Gilbert. I'm deleting the channel. <laughs> like if they're 20 and 40, 60 games in, you're probably trading one of your three starting pitchers kind of like chalking it and going to next year when you're getting prospects but i'm not gonna i don't want i don't want to think about that that just makes me feel that just makes me feel gross inside but i don't know like of course like everyone wants the team to win that's where everyone's stemming all of their either frustrations or optimism like hopefulness it all comes from the same place like they just, we just want the, the team to win we want the ball club to be good and like in the end could adding like so i could adding 50 million dollars in payroll help sure <laughs> is it a guarantee no the mets didn't play well last year like it's never a guarantee mm -hmm. in the end we're all fans of this baseball team 
And that's why we're all here. That's why there are 180 of us here right now. That's why Joe and I are here. You know, after we both... Did you work today? I, I did. You know, Joe and I both worked today. And here we are. You know? we wa- I came home from work. I watched whatever you would call that sport where the Mariners lose to the Blue Jays. And now here I am. You know? It's because we love this team. And we all do. And you all do too. And we're all very passionate about it. It's just hard when the thing that you love so much also hurts you so much. You know, you know, That's I've been so in, poetic. <laughs> thank you so much, dude. I've been, I've been in some toxic relationships, chat. Jesus. But none more so, none more so than my love for the Seattle Mariners. All right. I'm seeing the Aaron. Yeah, I, I, I think you've self-corrected or maybe not self-corrected you you remembered ryan bliss exists polanco meltdown of colton wong levels yeah would just ryan bliss is up next like i don't think unless cole young's hitting 400 and double a like i don't see him coming up at the until like a september thing if it's dire so uh, i can't get out of the relationship with the mariners soda mojo all right it's not possible. They're the, they're the love of my lives. You know, maybe maybe I'm a masochist, guys. Maybe I just want people to hurt me. Joe. Yeah. Hurt me. I, I, uh, your hair looks dumb. I hate you. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I did <laughs> hurt you earlier by spoiling the Hanager home run. Yeah, dude. Okay, so chat. Chat. My bad. I, I can't quit you, dude. <laughs> the Mariners are like crack, guys. I know they're bad for my health, but I still keep doing it. Got to keep going. Um, back. I I I know. What are we talk about. Oh, I have Fubo. That's the only way I can watch the stupid Seattle Mariners. It's the only way. But that Fubo is like probably 20, 30 seconds behind regular like MLB TV and whatnot. And uh, I got a text from Joe, and he said, "Oh, you just I'm sure you just really love Mariners baseball, huh?" And I'm like, "Oh." Huh. Yeah, just thinking he's just randomly saying that. No, that was said, no, that was that was like that was like twenty like fifteen minutes before. Oh, was it? Yes. Okay, okay. It was fifteen yeah, minutes yeah. before. And then I see Hanniger's home run happen and I immediately go to text him to tweet something. And I'm not thinking about the fact that I have MLB TV and I'm watching it like You don't have MLB TV. Colton has MLB TV and I'm mooching off of him <laughs> because <laughs> you know. I live in California. I don't get blackout restrictions. And so I'm watching it there and I text Colton. And this is, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. Oh no. Far from it. Yeah. Far from it. And so immediately I get berated in the chat (laughs) that (laughs) I have spoiled something for Colton. And he said 12 games in. So I I'm doing better than I think he expected. He had probably expected worse out of me. Worst performance. 12 games in. What's 12 divided by, like, 162 divided by 12 is, like, around 13. Why are you doing so much math today? It's because I like math. It's around 13. Expect this to happen at least 12 more times is what we're saying. If, I, if I'm if i on pace for a 12-game average, around 12 more times. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, we we should. We should start this like, a, like an AA meeting. Hi, I'm Colton, and I'm a Mariners fan. Hi, Colton. Colton, what brings you in today? Well, I came home from work today, and I was like, man, I'm really excited to watch the Seattle Mariners play baseball. I clicked on the old telly, and it was 5-0. to zero. And I said, all right. <laughs> <clears throat> so Lucario's this trying you know, to troll. Yeah. Yeah, he is classic Lucario. I'll just time him out again like I do pretty much every stream at this point. Easy peasy. Um yo, sick. Thank reference. you, K Kitty. Thank you for being here for me, guys. Uh appreciate it, everyone. Hi, Colton. Hey, Soto Mojo. What's up, bro? What's up? Uh, we're here for me. Thanks, guys. Hey, hi, I'm I'm Boomer and I'm a Mariners fan. Hi, Boomer. <laughs> just the, the sad face, too. It's like the saddest face. Because you're just dis. You're not like you're just disappointed, right? That face to me is like, yeah, still here, still a Mariners fan. I 
me personally, I tried getting away. You know, I dipped out on the Mariners for a solid like three, four years, maybe five. I was a Giants fan for a good stretch of time. I wore Giants gear to the Mariners spring training one time. I mean, there's a picture of me, Colton, and Brendan Ryan, and I'm wearing Giants gear. I tried, but then they brought me back in. They brought is, me back in. Is this where I re mentioned the you went off to college quote that people loved so much? You know, you know the one? No. And uh, you don't? I, I made it during like a podcast at one point. Chad will remember. Um, you know, I, I, Lucario specifically will remember. Um, Did I change? No, they, no, no, no. It was, no, 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 not you specifically leaving to college. It was, I think it was a quote about Mitch Hanniger. And I said, oh, it's like he went to college. Oh, yes. You know, yes, and then yes. he came back. Mm-hmm. That that was you to Mariners fandom, baby. Mm-hmm. Joe's relapse is true, dude. That was right after my JP sandwich comment that, yep. you, that you were a little confused about. And you tried making in a, oh, I'm deep in the relapse. I, like, I've been in the relapse, like, for a, for a while. We, we're, we're, we're deep in here. Who loves math? Me. I was a math major for a while, guys. Yeah, he was. As long as we hit 54%, we good. I mean, they're not even close <laughs> to that right now. <laughs> nope. They'll, it'll be a miracle if they yeah. pull it back. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll relapse into their winning ways. Maybe they need to have a meeting like this. Yeah, like, maybe they just need to... <laughs> Maybe that's just what 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 we are now. Instead of a post game show, we're just Mariners, Mariners, Mariners Anonymous. Yeah, yeah. An AMA, but like it, the last two stand for Mariners Anonymous. I don't know what the first A stands for, because like ask me anything, you know, like how do you translate that? But we're we're workshopping things. Okay, it's 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 in the works. Just bear with us. We we should create a Twitter account. No. That's the Mariners true. make you drink, Greg. <laughs> Colton's got a slam and Sam over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Daniel's just yeah. preaching right there. Like the stream. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Yes, you know, it is true, chat. It is true that when the Mariners play bad, the channel does worse. Facts. <laughs> it is a fact of life, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, please like the stream, guys. Just Understandably like, really so. Quick. Like, yeah, no I don't blame you. To guys. watch content about a team that's bad. Shit, like, I don't want to make content about a team that's bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's why I was, I was, like I said earlier, I was gonna stream, and then I looked at the game and said, never mind. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to anymore. But here we are. Here we are. Maybe. In America, I mean, I've I, I this season I've done like what three yeah dude, live Col- streams four Col- live Colton streams. is you know he's clocking in for the streams lately guys yeah Car just, just not... out here just trying to spread some some bad some bad juju some bad mojo even mojo <gasps> mojo speaking of which I got to give a shout out to my guy Shad all right I met Shad at work the other day he said he looked me dead in the eyes and he goes hey. Are you from Soto Mojo? And close I said, enough. <laughs> close enough. Hi, I'm Colton. Nice to meet you. And he said his name's Shad. And he had been listening to one of the most recent pods. It wasn't the one we just, it was a couple days ago. Yeah. But yeah. It's me, Soto Mojo. That's you, bro. That's you, bro. What do you think Scott Hi, you refuses to change the lineup around? Matt, see, he did today. Ty yeah. was batting four. I honestly, like... I tweeted it as a joke, but like Rojas leading off, Ty batting second, Canzone batting third. Run it. Why not? <laughs> Let's get crazy. But realistically, like, I mean, I think someone said Polanco's got an, what, an eight game on base streak. Like he, I haven't loved what I've seen out of the three spot from him. I wouldn't mind him moving down. However, I understand why he's probably going to stay in the three spot for a little bit. Nine hole Julio, yo, turn the lineup over Donatello with, you know, Julio Rodriguez. That's our guy. I know it was like someone, someone tweeted us yesterday, like it's time to move JP down. Like, there's, there's a conversation to be had about like you know trying to get the best guys that are performing bet more at bats 
having your nine hole hitter go two for four today, having your eight hole hitter be like, you know, Dom hitting a home run. Like, it's just how do you construct that lineup and have it still, I guess, I don't want to say make sense, but like, how do you get those guys more at bats without sacrificing some of the better ones? So, what's so funny? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'll tell you after stream. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Come to Tacoma and go to Rainier's game. Hey, man, I'm in. See you there. I will see you there. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, what would your perfect lineup be right now, Joe? Like, do you think, like, maybe just for, like, a couple games. Like, not not for, not for. Um, Billy, like, no one wants to see that. Just going to throw it out there. No one wants to see Colton Streak. Dude, a uh, after, um, <clears throat> After um, the George Kirby game, when Joe sent me forty dollars to go get a couple more adult beverages after what I had just watched, a few more, and that my might have, you know. Yeah, Greg, <laughs> I am in like in or around the North Bay, around the Bay Area. Um, optimal lineup. God, dare I say J.P. Julio and Polanco should stay? I don't see. I say that I don't think so. But I don't know who who bats lead off, because aside from JP and Julio, I don't think there's anybody fit on the team. Like I say, Rojas is a joke. I don't really think Josh Rojas should be batting lead off. That is just a joke. It is trolling. But I'll stick with JP Julio as one and two, and then I'll go high three, Hanager four, Polanco five. Garver six, Cal seven. No, see, I'm saying that I don't even believe it. I I need you to give me some inspiration. I don't even believe what I'm saying. Sorry, I was taking a, a screenshot of Sal Vernella saying if we make the playoffs, I'll kiss Scott while streaking. Perfect. So that I have it. Yes. Yeah, so so if the Mariners make the playoffs, yeah. You know, just you know, mm -hmm. heaping receipts. With Colton's bouffant, I'd pay to see it. Sorry? Is that a Pokemon? Buffalo bouffant? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, honestly, I personally, Joe, would go Rojas leading off for a little while. Damn. <laughs> I don't. That's I, my this, guy. They, they need to mix up. They need to mix up. I don't, I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. move JP down to like eight, nine right now. He's not giving you good at-bats. I mean, they're okay. But like, yes, I say put him, in, put him at lead off until he, until he, he cools off. Hmm. Which could be tomorrow. He could cool off tomorrow. He really could. Rojas, we're actually backing Rojas's lead off. I'm, I'm in shock, guys. I'm. In I shock. don't care. I don't care what it takes. Get some life into this team right now. And if, and if it takes Rojas, if I'm making a lineup right now, Rojas, Julio, Ty, Mitch Haniger, those are my top four. Dom can zone batting five. Yeah, Dom can zone five. Then the bottom of your lineup, dude. You go. You probably go Cal, Garver, Polanco, JP. Damn. Oh, God. Mix it up. Did yeah, you, like Aaron you, said, send a you, message. Send a message. Can you imagine they roll that out Friday to start a new homestand against the Cubs on Apple TV, no less? You've got Josh Rojas <laughs> batting leadoff. Oh, I don't care. I think, collectively, Mariners Twitter might have a meltdown. I think they'll have a meltdown regardless, but, like... They already are. I know that's what I'm saying. Like, it'll be... It'll... It will further you know it'll incur some violence on the timeline i think like things will start to happen colton you're getting a lot of praise here perfect lineup. thanks guys Look thanks at you. thank you everyone i normally don't get a lot of praise from you guys normally it's like colton you're an idiot which is true i think urias will play tomorrow aaron against kikuchi yeah the lefty so we'll see urias tomorrow um do you think they're just kind of like preventing Luke Rayleigh from being a competent baseball player because they're not yeah, playing I, him. I don't, I don't get it to be honest with you. I don't like, I understand like, cause like Canzone's playing better and like Hanger's playing better, but like, I'm tired boss. I'm tired boss. You'll no, I, I also, I think no, maybe not tomorrow. Not, not tomorrow. But Friday. Who Who's starting for the Cubs Friday? Do we know? I can go look it up really quick. Yeah. You know, thoughts on this? We'll get we'll get crazy. We move Ty France 
to second base. Oh, shut up. <laughs> and Stop put Luke Rayleigh at first. Is just is Ty really that much worse at defense at second base than Jorge Polanco? I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> Hear me out. That's a good point. Hear me out. Uh, Cubs Friday has not been. It's not on MLB.com, but Kyle Hendricks is pitching for them tomorrow. Ben Brown started for them today. Javier Assad started on Monday. I think it'll be. I think we see Imanaga game two. Jordan Wicks probably a lefty game one. I think it'll be oh, okay. If if it's looking how it's supposed to, it'll go Wicks, Imanaga, and then Javier Assad is who we'll face in those three. If it's I'd say out. Mariners have the pitching. Um, yeah, you know what? No, let's let's no. stop saying that. You know what? No, the Cubs have the advantage on the mound. The Cubs do. The Cubs have the advantage in every facet of that series. Personally. That's right. No, no doubt about it. Um, I think game two, you bench Garver for a few, like, like, like user error said, that's why I was asking who's starting mm. and, and, and throw Luke Rayleigh in at DH or, yeah. or Handiger DH Luke Rayleigh in right probably, but something, I, I mean, Garver do it. does need a day off. Yeah. No, let give him a day off. I would prefer that it was, you know. One like a, a day before or after the the um off day, so he gets a couple in a row. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's gonna happen when there's a lefty, you know. Yo, yeah. speaking of lefties, Chad, Chad Ooh. with the five dollar holla said no lefty in rotation. A lot of multi position players means not that great. Rotation was hyped too much. Won't resign core players. Sad to be a fan, you know. Chad, I appreciate your five dollar holla. Um, uh, no lefty in the rotation. I don't personally think matter matters that much I'm um moved by no lefty would it be like like either way i'm yeah, I, like if they had one sick if they don't i'm not upset yeah i mean the only one that would have made any difference would have been blake snell or jordan montgomery imanaga or or imanaga he's that's true that is solid he's been he has been solid sick this year so far I, I, for some reason imanaga in my head was a free agent like four years ago Long? It feels so long ago, you know what just I mean? How bad the off season was. It felt like it's yeah. like just that long. I um, think the multi position stuff, like, is that really? There it goes. There's there it is on screen. Ta da! Um, I think it was Eric Kratz, maybe on foul territory. Was talking about oh God. got like teams that are drafting or developing prospects to be multi position is almost like setting them up for failure to an extent to like not live up to their full potential, like not letting them focus in on one spot and really like develop at that position. I don't like fully disagree. I think there are natural athletes that, you know, can just play a, like a multitude of positions. So like, like the multi-position guys here we're talking about was maybe like what Rojas and like Uri's like platoons and Dylan Moore and stuff like that. Moore has been amazing. Moore has been. Yeah. A breath of fresh air every time he's in there against a lefty. I would not be surprised to see him continue to stay hot against Kikuchi in the final game against Toronto tomorrow. But realistically, he's going to strike out for it. He's going to get the golden sombrero. So, you know, we can just like scratch that one off. But, you know, re-signing core guy, like, that's yet to be fully seen, I would say. Like, I don't know if that's really kind of come to pass in this like era of like Mariner's space. Like is Teo a core guy that we're considering they didn't resign? I don't know. He wouldn't have resigned anyway. Regardless of that. Yeah. Everyone say, Oh, you guys let, like Mariners let Teo walk. He wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. He just, he, he, he hit well, or he hit terribly in T-Mobile. He wasn't coming back. It's just unfor the unfortunate fact of the matter. I think that when you say the Mariners haven't locked up their core guys, I mean, arguably their best hitter and their best pitcher have both been locked up to extensions. Yeah. Uh, JP was extended as well. Um, so, I mean, the, the the core guys, obviously that extends to George and Logan and uh, Cal, etc. But A, there's still time. And B, as of right now, <laughs> I don't think they want to re-sign with the Mariners at this point, at the at this very moment. They know how good this team could be in the future, but right now, it's just... I don't know. There's just nothing about it. Bryce Miller hasn't been extended? No. 
I think that's in reference to like the best pitcher being extended is like Bryce Miller's our best pitcher. Oh, I think I think that's where my brain is processing. I get it. The framing I of that comment. If I'm wrong, my bad, Owen. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, I think offensively, like I just don't know like who would like want to right now, and like the way that like the prospects are kind of lined up. Like if Cal goes, unfortunately, to like think about. Like Harry Ford's right there, so I got you, Owen. I got you, Doug. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I'm not. I don't really want to think about like extension stuff right now, mainly just because I want the team to like play good baseball instead. Yeah, I don't think it matters. The extension stuff doesn't matter right now if the team's not good, unless of course they are incentivized by an, a contract extension. So more money makes them play uh-huh. better. So mo we, money, not mo problems. Yeah, not mo problems at that point. If you give mo Cal money, mo runs. like seven years, a hundred million or whatever, like you're thinking people would, you know, what what Cal Raleigh would sign, and then he starts hitting four hundred and hitting, you know, multi homer games every single night, then yeah, give him mo money, mo money, less problems. So yeah, just, just throwing it out there. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Yo, scrap, dude! Everybody hit scrap with hit scrap with the like on that as well. Like with the, the nine ninety nine, the ten dollar holla is T-Mobile Park, uh, the hardest park to hit in. Is it the Marine Layer? Is it the dimensions of the park? I mean, why can't anyone hit in T-Mobile? I think that it's definitely a combination of all of those things. I also think that, I mean, if you guys remember, the uh, fences actually were brought in. Back in like 2016 or again. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? But like right field, like that's a haven for left-handed hitters. Think about how good Robbie Cano was when he came here. Like Robbie Cano was solid and he was taking advantage. Kyle Seager, they were taking advantage of that left field Porsche for the Mariners. That's the place to hit it. I think that it's it, it really is a mixture of all those things. And it's just a big field, man. Shorter fences does not necessarily make it easier to get hits. Absolutely, Braden. I mean, you look at the Boston Red Sox, just because this, like, they, they play in a Little League baseball field, it works both ways. Mm-hmm. So the fact is that the Mariners play 81 games at T-Mobile Park. Therefore, they build this team around pitching, and it's just the pitching has been bad. And when the pitching is on at T-Mobile Park, you know, that's you're you're in for a night, a good night if you're the Mariners, as long as your offense can sweep across a few runs. Yeah, I looked up uh, Park Factor. Rolling the last three years, it's also including 2024. The Mariners, T Mobile's dead last. Uh, 93. Petco's at 95. Uh, City Field at 96. Like, that just, I think 100 is the average. For, for perspective, Coors Field is 113. So like <laughs> that's you know it's damn near like it's twenty points better than like being able to produce offense. And I I see other people saying like you know certain players can hit in T-Mobile yada yada yada. Like I don't know what it is about like either it's like the slow start the guy's just like not there it is there's the super chat notification. Ta-da! Um, it's frustrating though. Like I see like Mike Trout can hit in T-Mobile. Yeah, like Trout just destroys us. We, you know, he's got the most home, like we're the team that he's hit the most home runs against. So it's like, what, what he just needs to tell us the secrets. Well, how can he hit in T-Mobile other than the fact that he's the, one of the greatest players of all time, Nelson Cruz mm-hmm. didn't have issues. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of guys to point out like that did not have issues, of course. And it's like, when that sh- turns around, like wh- when, when do we get to see that in T-Mobile? And it's just likely after April, like, our best hitter, Julio Rodriguez, like the guy that is the 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 motor, the engine for the offense. In his career, he's batting 218 in April. In May, he's batting 281. So if he Who just, was that Julio, you said? Yeah, he's batting 218 in April, a 625 OPS in 58 games across his career. In 55 in May, he's got an 811 OPS. Like, dude just he's a he's a slumbering giant. You know, he just he's got a slow start. He takes a little bit to get going. But once he gets heading downhill, he's good. It's just you can't you can't just have that every year. You can't get out to these slow starts every single year. 
Like it's just, mm-hmm. you are, I made the insanity comment earlier. You're doing the same thing again. Like, like I said, last year we started four and eight. This year we're starting four and eight. Julio was bad at the beginning of last year. Julio was bad at the beginning of this year. Like you need to break the cycle. You need to escape it somehow, some way. You need to just get over that hump. Julio equals Reggie Gigas. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you uh, for that. K. Kenny says, do you think we should sit Polanco tomorrow or start Rojas at second, Urias at third, sit Mitch uh, Garver, play Rayleigh and right, and let Hanny DH? Because it's a lefty, I'm going to say no. And yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go with the with the splits there. Um, I would say keep... I, I, uh, I, <laughs> How's the brain there? Uh, <laughs> so Urias starting at third. Benching Polanco for the game and putting Rojas at third or at second, I'm in. I'm in. Um, but I think Garver stays in as a DH. I think Demo probably plays left field, Mitch Hanniger and right. Or I'm sorry, Mitch Hanniger maybe. Yeah, Mitch Hanniger and right, Julio in center, Ty France at first, maybe, maybe Rojas at second base. And then have Urias. Because I mean, frankly, right-handed Polanco does not you know, give me as much of excitement as left-handed Polanco. I know that sounds weird. And it's supposed to. Um, <laughs> it was intended that way. Also, just to talk about, just to wrap a bow on slow starts, hot starts. You guys remember when the Mariners started 13 and 2? What year How'd was they that do one? that year, guys? <laughs> what, what year was that? How, how'd they do that year? Huh? Uh, 2019, Joe. Was What'd a, they finish? A, a cool, um, not, I, I can tell you, not good. <laughs> <laughs> Your guy, Danny Burgers, he's the all-star for the team that year. Hold on, I have to get to the... Uh, yeah, Lego Man, we have. We have. We did a... You can find it. It was like the when they did the creator spotlight over there. Uh, we were the first ones they had on for that. Yeah, I wasn't there the entire time. Um, Colby yeah. shut off my power, so... Yeah, that's what happened for sure. Yeah, 2019, 68 and 94 finished the Seattle Mariners after a what start did you say, Colton? 13 and 2. 13 and 2, oh. Yep, yeah. Unfortunately, that is uh, not the way you want to finish out that season after going 13 and 2. Because they lost Tim Beckham, bro, to PEDs. Shame. What, what Shame. could have been? Domingo Santana been? basically just died, you know? Rip also... Anyway? I have a gripe. Okay. Why have, why in another, not another, neither of these games have the Blue Jays use Daniel Vogelbach? Come on. Help me. Do it for me. They just don't, they don't, they don't know you like that, little bro. Do it for me, man. Come on. <laughs> this shit matters to me, man. It matters to me. You'll probably see, I mean, he's also had some, like, pretty bad base running blunders. I mean, natural for him to, to have that happen. But, yeah, he uh just hasn't looked great. There have been some some complaints around, like, Blue Jays Twitter people just, like, get to send him down and just get, just get rid of him and bring up somebody else. Like, there's no point in keeping Vogelbach. So, you know, you might not see him. <laughs> I'm dead inside. Is Colton drunk? No. Why, why does everyone always say I'm drunk? Because you get you you, see, you you stumble over your words sometimes when you get excited. That's because I'm an idiot. Not because I'm drunk. If I was Basically, drunk, I was... Like, you know what I'm Ryan Bliss like could be on. Ryan Bliss could be... If Polanco is still not great defensively, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened by like July, like June or July. You want to, you want to address that one, Colton? That was just funny. (laughs) I don't want to address it. It was just funny. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Blitz and assuming nobody gets hurt June or July, I think would, uh, I think that is when we could see Ryan Bliss. Let's say Alonco's is not performing. Urias is not performing. Then I think that, you kind of might call on Ryan Bliss, even if it's just as a bench roll or as a platoon. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I don't know. I, 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 this team is infuriating. I love them so much. Yeah. You're, you're really hopping back on like the masochist train there, dude. You're really just all about it. I mean, as a, as a Mariners fan, we, we're all masochists. Mm-hmm. There, there's no two ways around it. That's just the, the way the cookie crumbles for you. 
I think Let's get out of here, Joe. Yeah, I think the final thing I want to address is Aaron saying, like, why are we keeping Rayleigh and Canzone on the same thing? It's the intention, I think, but for having Hanniger, Rayleigh, and Canzone on the same rosters, they weren't expecting Mitch to, I think, play all but one game so far. It really felt like it was going to be more of like a rotating, like, three person outfield there in the corners. But Mitch has played well. I think if you see Mitch start to scuffle, which we don't want to see happen, you'll see more of one or the other, likely Rayleigh, because he's been kind of getting the short end of the stick. But that's probably my like my two cents on that. But I am I am happy to we can call the stream there. We appreciate, you know, everyone coming out, hanging out with us after a loss. You said yeah. like what, 180 people or whatever here earlier on a loss? Uh, yeah. That's crazy. We usually Yo! Like, Yo, a five dollar holla at the buzzer from Kenny, dude. Crazy. Thank you both for being on stream tonight. Been nice getting to vent about whatever this team has been for the last two doing for the last two weeks. Big preach, dude. Appreciate you, K Kenny, for real. Thanks for always dude, hanging out with us. So and, fast. And uh, you know, always always being there with us, K Kenny. It does mean a lot. You know, if you're if you're ever in a ball game, in any of you guys, if you guys are ever in a ball game, you know, and you see us, please say hello. You know what I mean? Because in the end. In the end, it's about the friends we made along the way, chat. Oh, God. And we made friends with all of you guys. And I'm so sad that the Mariners suck. <laughs> but I'm so excited to watch them suck again tomorrow at 12.07. <laughs> Be there. We're just ready to go. <laughs> clocking in for the day. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe if, if things go well, I'll stream tomorrow. Maybe. You never Will know. you be there, Joe? I, I mean, the the chances are quite high. There's a chance. Unsub? I hate you, Aaron. You're no, dead Aaron. to me. Never mind. You're dead to me, bro. Aaron, I agree. They're they're asking for Mitch to get hurt by playing him every day. But yeah, that is true. So, with that, you guys are just going to keep dragging us back in unless we, you know, commit just to the like big the Mariners. and end it. But we're going to get out of here. Again, thank you to everybody who stopped in. The first double stream in a while felt good. Felt yeah. good to not have to solo. You know, same for you. You know, you guys were you were solo streaming for a couple games there. But Lucario, stop. All right. Since Lucario said the magic words, we have to end stream now. Yo, wait is, Bye. The, is the final thing. So.